This video was recorded over the course of nine months. We shot half a second frame every 10 minutes. What we first encountered was a large area of disturbed soil, roughly 14 feet by 16 feet, which would turn out to be the cellar component to this feature. This cellar portion of the pit was about five feet deep. And you can see here on the left side of the frame, orange clay starting to appear. That was a subsoil shelf. That's actually where floorboards would have rested to make up the floor of the cellar. We removed an absolutely massive quantity of soil from this feature. You can see the excavators filling up these white buckets. These are three gallon buckets. Every single bucket of dirt was removed to be screened through at a minimum an eighth inch mesh uh, through a process called water screening. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 200,000 artifacts were recovered during this process. From the field, all of these artifacts were removed to the archaeological laboratory where they were conserved, preserved, and ultimately cataloged. Some of these artifacts will end up on display in our archaeological museum, the Archaearium. At this stage in the excavation, we are getting down to the five foot level just about everywhere. And you can see that clay, orange clay subsoil shelf now coming into view pretty much all around the uh, perimeter of the rectangular cellar here at the five foot level. Now what was absolutely fascinating was what happened next. You can see below that five foot level there a circular pit starts to take shape and that's what you see us digging into here. This circular pit was 10 feet in diameter. Right about now we started to hit some groundwater and that's when we knew that in all likelihood we had found a well. The date range of the artifacts coming out of the pit said to us that this might be James Fort's or Jamestown's first well, which Captain John Smith had the colonists build in either the fall of 1608 or the spring of 1609. So we had this amazing feature, which was both a cellar and quite possibly the fort's first well. This circular portion of the pit dropped for about another seven feet below the level of the cellar floor. So now we're about 12 feet into the pit altogether. And what you see here is us now moving down below the water table, looking for the actual well lining. The well lining would have kept the mud out of the, out of the water source. So over to the left hand side of the frame here in a moment, you will see a wooden barrel. There it is, a small circle start to come into view. That was all that remained of the well lining for this particular well below the cellar floor. In fact, we think all there was was a singular wooden cask at the bottom of the circular portion of the pit. So the circular portion, 10 feet in diameter by 7 feet deep, had also remained an open pit like the cellar above. So likely both chambers were used for storage. This feature has proven to be one of the most exciting and most significant archaeological features found to date at James Fort. While far too many artifacts were found in this well to talk about them all here, it's worth mentioning a few of the highlights, including these Virginia Indian artifacts. We found thousands of Virginia Indian artifacts which likely came into the fort through trade. This unique slate writing tablet came out of the well fill. Both sides had inscriptions of people, of animals, of plants. Uh, there was also quite a bit of handwriting on both sides of the tablet. Much of that is still to be deciphered. Dozens of butchered horse remains such as these seen here and dog remains were found in the well, evidence that people had consumed these animals. Uh, which is one of the reasons why we think this was James Fort's first well, 
because it was during the starving time winter of 1609 and 1610 that all six horses were consumed as well as many if not all of their dogs. One of the big surprises to come out of this well were these tobacco pipe stems you see here made of local Virginia clay and stamped with the names of some of the key figures in the Virginia Company and in England at the time. These include Sir Walter Raleigh, Lord Deloire, Captain Samuel Argyll, Captain Francis Nelson, Sir Charles Howard, Sir Walter Cope, and the Earl of Southampton.